Welcome to this episode of MMA Fancast. My name is Luke. I'm joined today by Caden Cassidy, who is the 2020 uh, 138-pound Pennsylvania State uh, AA wrestling champ. Caden, welcome. How you doing? I'm, uh, I'm doing really well. It's great to have you on the show. We've got a lot to cover uh, because we're going to talk about you doing MMA here in November, uh, which is why you're on the show, because we want to talk about that 247 fighting championship fight coming up. But obviously, we need to talk about your wrestling career. Um, by my math, you finished 105 wins and seven losses in your high school career, and your senior year for Bedford High School was a perfect 38-0. and 0. Can you walk us through a little bit about what your wrestling career was like, particularly that final year for you? Yeah, you know, I, I think that was my record. I'm pretty sure I don't I don't really follow it that well. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what the record was. And um, you're good. You're good. Sorry about that. But um, yeah, I went through a lot of injuries, a lot of um, a lot of like, I mean, out of out of wrestling for a little bit for, from injuries and just battling everything and fought back senior year, got better. And then I guess I did good. So. Yeah, you did. You did pretty okay. Um, this is, this is just because we're in the life of COVID. I had a COVID question for you. I saw that you uh, won your title March 8th, I believe the day was, and that was obviously great for you, but that's about a week before everything shut down. So how worried were you? Did you know anything about COVID in the leads up to States or was that kind of not something you knew about till later? Uh, I, I really didn't think about it, but um, me and my dad were talking that I was so lucky to get States in. And uh, I mean, what was it like two or three days later, they shut everything down. I know Ohio kids, um, they went to States and they got it shut down like when they were there. So it's pretty bad. Yeah. And as far as tournaments getting shut down, I know the, um, NCAA shut down all of their college wrestling tournaments at, at the very same time when the guys yeah. were out there on the mats as well. So, um, yeah, it, it's a blessing that you made it through and that you stayed healthy. Um, it looks like you would know better, but it looks like at least from your, um, news clippings and stuff that your sophomore year was your roughest injury year, you needed a surgery and some stuff. What was it, what was it like having, uh, the unknowns, your sophomore year, you're still kind of young and wanting the future. What was it like battling through that, not later in your career, but early in your career? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, yeah. I mean, I got injured my before my freshman year. I tore I tore my um, labor on my shoulder. Then sophomore year, I tore my thumb. And then um, after junior year, I hurt my knee. But I mean, I'm all healed up now. And senior year, I was lucky. I was praying that I didn't get injured. And I mean, God must have listened to my prayers because I didn't get injured at all, and I felt healthy, and that was the best I've ever wrestled. Yeah, you, you definitely had an incredible senior yeah. year. Was there a technical aspect that might have helped? I know you were uh, reportedly pretty good and well-known for your tilt series. Was there stuff that kind of kept you safe, or was it just because you got so aggressive? I know you're used to putting your opponents kind of – either tech follow them or follow them. So did that kind of keep you safe or? or kind yeah. Of yeah. I mean, I just build up my conditioning. I'm always conditioning because I'm always tech following people. I mean, you can go out there and pin them in 15 seconds, but you're not getting, you're not getting any work. Honestly, some of the matches that go into overtime or that are three, two aren't as hard as when I tech fall kids like 17, nothing. Cause you're just constantly going and going it builds up like your muscles. And so you're not tired. So that honestly helped me in the postseason a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would guess you'd probably know the name Chael Sonnen uh, yeah. in yeah. the wrestling and MMA world. And he had his podcast it was probably about maybe about a year ago. He was talking specifically about how he feels that the tech fall in wrestling is the absolute domination because there are there are some things that a pin can happen almost, I wouldn't say by accident, but can happen yeah. in a very short period of time. And it really is not controlling the whole fight. So when you think about tech fall, uh, and just putting on one thing after another after another, how does that start transitioning you into what you're doing now in MMA? Obviously, you have wrestling ahead of you, and we're going to talk about that. But do you think there's a connection between the tech fall mindset and what you have to do in MMA? Yeah, I mean, just pressuring opponents, like keep going, keep going, not just same thing, not wanting to win just by a little bit, like wanting to dominate your opponent, just same thing. I mean, just building on that, building up conditioning. I mean, even if it's 
even if it's a close fight, you just got to keep pushing everything. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and one last thing on your wrestling career, it, it's reported that you're committed to George Mason. Is that still the plan in the future? And what does that look like college wise for you? Yeah, I still go up there and train this year. I took a gap year, which is instead of five years with a red shirt, I get six years. So it's basically two red shirts and I get six years of eligibility. So I'm not, I don't get to compete at all this year. Okay. Yeah. And is that when you're uh, talk to us about how your idea to do some MMA came about? And then of course, what's the training been like so far? Yeah. So this year is, um, I mean, it's pretty empty. I'm just training wrestling, but then, um, I wanted to fight all along. I even wanted to get some fights in last year, but I mean, COVID hit and everything. And, um, I mean, just training MMA, I'm up there like four or five days a week and then at home training with my dad, MMA, I'm just taking a break from wrestling right now. Just getting some simple stuff in. So. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes sense. And what's your main gym when you're, when you're actually going to a gym and training with fighters as opposed to being trained by your dad, where's your main gym? A uh, grill house. Okay. Grill yep. house. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's actually, that's actually how I heard about you through Ethan, um, Ethan Goss, who's obviously a pro out of grill yeah. house. He's going to be fighting for two, four, seven. And he's been big on you. I think I had him on the show last year when he was fighting John DeJesus for the belt. And he talked about you back then at that point, you were a senior and your career was going really well, but you hadn't gotten the championship yet. And he was talking about training with you. So what's it like training with really Ethan and all the guys at the gorilla house? How's that been going for you? I mean, we're really underrated in wrestling. I mean, those guys, they push me. I don't even need to go to wrestling practice really right now. Cause they're, they're amazing wrestlers. And I mean, it's even hard for me to take them down cause they're so good. Their defense and offense, it's, him, Cam, Sid, Sheldon, they're all good at wrestling. So, I mean, it, they push me in practice every day, and it's I'm thankful for those kind of partners. Absolutely. And that list you just went through, everybody that you just referenced will be fighting at the yep. 4 7 Fighting Championship in November. It's going to be an absolutely stacked two cards. Um, and I, I will give a little bit of love to Cam Algeier. We like him. He's a great guy. But he's fighting for the amateur title belt there. For 247. So talk to us a little bit about what's it like specifically with Cam and what do you see potentially happening for him in this fight? Like I said, Cam's wrestling, his jujitsu. I mean, he pushes me every day. I mean, he's he teaches me a lot, and he's both Ethan and Cam, they they've teach like they taught me a lot this camp. And I mean, I'm I know I'm new to MMA, but I've learned a lot and I feel like I'm getting better every single day with them. So and Cam. I mean, his wrestling is good and his jiu-jitsu is good, but his hands are underrated too. I mean, he knows he knows how to get in the pocket and, and then work his takedowns. And I mean, I really don't see anyone beating him. Like he's he's good. So well, I'm sure that means a lot to him coming uh, coming from you. And uh, so talk to us about MMA. When's the first time you did anything that wasn't specifically wrestling? Because obviously with your pedigree, you've been focused on wrestling since you were five. So when did you start? When did you start doing any bits of MMA and give us some specifics on what you've liked training? I mean, I've I've played around with MMA when I, since I was like probably 14, 15, but I haven't really started getting into it until maybe like a year ago. And even then I wasn't really training hard. I was still going to wrestling, but really during this COVID, um, when COVID hit, we were still training like underground stuff and I was I really got an MMA then so that's probably when I started like March April May somewhere in between there with all the guys that are fighting on the card gotcha yeah and that probably actually was a blessing in disguise for you because Ethan was telling us um that he felt like that training when the gym was closed and you guys were kind of just meeting up when you could yeah he said he felt like that training was really good because it was it was exactly what you wanted to be but it wasn't that pressure of being yeah. there six days a week or something like that. So for exactly. you, that kind of worked out. After the season was over, you said that you um, were healthy, you know, it was the healthiest you had been. Um, what's it like to go right from, the, you know, the pinnacle of state wrestling to kind of a, a, a new sport or kind of a new challenge? Yeah, I mean, like we, like we said, um, all of us were in there working during this COVID season. So when those other guys were taking breaks, maybe taking two, three months off, I mean, we were all in there working. We were going hard too. It was sparring. Like we were sparring a lot and we were going hard. It wasn't just going through the motions. Like even though we weren't in there every day, we were going hard when we were in there and then I was still wrestling. But um, I feel like it's really helped me 
COVID's actually helped me. I feel like my wrestling's better. And then this new chapter in my life, I can't wait to get into it. So it's great. Well, it will certainly be exciting. Uh, yeah. I have the I have the opportunity to do the um, the video play by play and color color commentary for two four seven. So I'm going to be cage side and uh, and get to to watch you live in action. Um, you've gone through a couple opponents and you are currently matched, which is great. I just talked to the matchmaker yesterday that you currently have an opponent, um, but obviously it's really not about your opponent. It's more about what you want to do. So, what would you like? to see for yourself in your first actual fight apart from the apart from the practice room and sparring what are you looking for to yourself I mean I'm just I'm always looking out there to go have fun but I'm also looking to win I I'm never going to do something just to do it go through the motions when I do something I'm going to train my hardest and then go really at it but um when I go out there I think I do want to stay on my feet a little bit more I'm not just going to I'm not a guy that's just going to go out there and take you down I feel like I do want to stay on my feet because I mean, my dad's a Muay Thai coach, me, Ray, my dad have been really working. And then all the guys that are fighting on the card, we really push each other, whether it's when we're on the ground or when we're on our feet. So I feel like we're a real well-rounded gym. And what do you like the best about striking so far? Because obviously striking is very far, both in posture and in technique away from, uh, from wrestling. So what do you like the best about striking? I mean, I just like, honestly, I mean, I don't mind getting hit. So when we're in the gym, just battling in the gym, just getting hit, you got to take punches. You got to be tough. I mean, all of our guys and girls are tough. So, I mean, we're just, we're tough at Gorilla House. So that's all I can really say. You guys are it's, very it's just tough. fun. It's just you guys fun. Are very so. tough in the Gorilla House. It's a great gym that you were in there. I know Sydney and her, and her parents run that. And yes. that's a great yeah. gym for them. And she's been on the podcast before. So it's always great to see the Gorilla yes, House. Tough be so connected um when you're building up to it uh, where are you with kind of what weight you'd like to be obviously you wrestled at 38 I don't know what type of weight cut that was where's the fight at in November and kind of what's your strategy as far as uh transitioning at least temporarily to MMA yeah so um this past year at States I wrestled 138 obviously which is plus two after Christmas for people who don't know wrestling and then plus two since it's a three-day state tournament okay. last day of states i actually weighed in at 138 so i didn't cut any weight the kid in my in my finals match probably was weighing 150 by the time i wrestled him like kid was huge and i'm about same thing i'm about 151 right now so i've gained a little bit of weight i've gained like eight nine pounds and then i gotta i think it's 142 i'm pretty sure so i'll just start maybe two weeks out cutting weight just same thing with wrestling i mean that shouldn't be a cut at all it should be really a two-day cut okay Right. Yeah. So it sounds like if you're saying your goal for the fight is 42, it might be a 40 pound fight. You might be at a yeah. catch weight fight. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a catch weight catch weight fight. And then catch later weight. on, I mean, I I got the body style of a 35. There's no way I'm big enough to go 40 or 45. So I'm definitely 35 in the future. Well, it's good for you to know that, and I think wrestlers have a good understanding of what their body can do. Back onto a wrestling question: When you talk about a tournament where you're wrestling three, four times a day or sometimes more. What's it like knowing that in MMA, at least the modern style MMA, where we don't do tournaments, what's it like knowing that there, that's it? You only have one one match, one opportunity. You're not wrestling three or four day, times in a day. Is that something you're excited about? Or are there times as a wrestler that you kind of liked getting on a streak in the same day? Yeah, I mean, the streak in wrestling is like, at States, you, you really can either get on a bad streak and get on a good streak, but MMA is going to help because um, my dad's really into getting a good warm up. And then mm -hmm. I know most people aren't, don't like getting warmed up, but I like to go in there with a full sweat going, like everything, my body's ready. And I know like from wrestling, I know when my body's ready. So that'll, I think this will benefit me, honestly. Yeah. If anything, uh, the, the concept of the full warm up by your dad is a good one because you could do a lot of work on your conditioning and keeping in yep. shape and then, also, uh, other than um, all the overtimes and stuff that can happen in wrestling, you're not looking at 15 minutes in wrestling. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So it is a. It, it can seem like oh, it's only one fight, but you got potential 15 minutes. You talked about your cardio when you started transitioning to the Muay Thai and the Jiu Jitsu. Anything other than just wrestling, what did it feel like cardio wise? Was it a relief? Did you feel less cardio drained, or did you feel more cardio drained because it was new to you? 
I mean, even the guys that um, I know Ethan will admit this, that wrestling cardio is definitely a lot harder. Mm -hmm. And then, but it's kind of transitions in MMA. So I'd say it's about the same, my opinion, but um, definitely just straight up boxing, boxing cardio is way harder because your shoulders get tired. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that doesn't really, I mean, MMA is all, everything. So, I mean, it's about the same, but boxing, when I'm just training straight boxing, that's, that's pretty tough. My shoulders get tired. So I'm not used to that yet. Yeah, that's, that's great feedback and insight for you. And that's why every sport has its own unique cardio drain. Because if you take a great boxer who's only ever boxed, obviously their cardio is insane. But you put them in a grappling, holding, you know, stuffing situation, they, they burn out almost yeah. instantly because they're used to fluidity. Whereas yep. wrestlers, you're used to more grinding and holding and boxing can be exhausting because it's go, 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 go. There's very little hold and, and, and pressure. So it's always interesting in every fight in MMA is different because sometimes you can watch an MMA fight and forget that it's not a boxing fight. I mean, there's times that it's literally just boxing. There's times it's wrestling. Um, when you, when you think about your favorite MMA fighters you've watched, who comes to mind as far as who you like watching? And then there's, are there MMA fighters that you want to kind of model yourself after? And those can be two different questions depending on what you like. Yeah, I mean, I love watching Conor McGregor, obviously. And then I love watching Justin Gaethje and then Habib Nurmagomedov. I mean, that was, that was a good, that was a good fight. I mean, Habib looked great last night. I mean, I've never seen his hand. I think his hands are really underrated. And then when he gets on the ground, I mean, obviously I want to model after that. I mean, he just mauls people, but, um, same thing. I know, I, I know, um, when I was like 16, 17, Connor was the guy. So I kind of got, I love him, but yeah, just those, those three guys, I like watching them a lot. I watch a lot of tape. So watch a lot of like UFC fights. So it's pretty fun. Well, yeah, I'm glad you brought all them up because they all have, they're, they're roughly in that, uh, weight category, a little bit bigger than you, but still the lighter weights. Um, and they all have different aspects. So let's break it down a little bit. Obviously, we'll talk about Habib first because he just went out on top at 29 and 0. Um, what did you what did you see yesterday um, that was kind of what you'd like to take from Habib? Uh, his his composure is really good. I mean, even he I think he was trying to prove a point in that in that first round that he could stand. I mean, I don't know if you saw that, but I yeah. think that. He was trying to prove a point before he went out. And, um, I mean, when he gets on the ground, he just – he basically suffocates you. Yeah. And he makes you turn down or he makes you give up something. It's just – I don't know. It's unbelievable. If he's not the best, then I don't know. Because he just – he looks like the best to me. Sure. Well, there's something yeah. on the beat that I think he did a little bit differently yesterday, which was probably because he knew – nobody else really knew, but he knew it was going to be his last fight because of a promise he made to his mother. Um but he's never been that technically jujitsu. I mean, going for an armbar, go and then yeah. going for an armbar yeah. again, and then a triangle. Typically, like you said, he's a smash guy. He got a lot yeah. of rear naked chokes because people would turtle away from him. But basically, he was pressure, 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 and a lot of his TKOs were just assaults on the ground. So, um, what's it like to see somebody who's literally at the top of his game still evolving and adding to his technique? And what does that give you as a mindset? Because obviously your mind is your best weapon. And here you are, young, 18, going in to not only MMA, but also college wrestling in the future. What's it like to see somebody at the top of his game, not just comfortable with what brought him there, but adding to it? Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an all-buy-in guy. So if I'm somewhere that I, that I know I can learn something, I'm going to buy in and I'm going to listen. But like you said, Habib, I mean, he obviously worked on his hands. And then when he got on the ground, his jiu-jitsu looked great. So, I mean, he's he that the best guys are willing to learn and I'm willing to learn. So, I mean, I'm just trying to learn new things every practice, whether you got you go in there and ask Ray, Cam or Ethan. I'm always asking questions, always trying to get better. So even if I'm not the best right now, I mean, I'm trying to strive to be the best. So absolutely. And humility goes a long way. When we yep. when we think of Connor, we wouldn't always think of humility. But one thing that Connor has done great when he's on and focused is he really looks at the strengths of his opponents and tries to prepare himself. And when you see the fight we saw yesterday, Connor had an actual better fight with Habib than uh, Gaethje just did as far as strikes landed and the ability to keep it um, standing. When you when you think about Connor and his flashy striking and techniques, what's the thing that stands out 
the most to you, if you were to have a Connor move down the road that you would incorporate, what would it be? I mean, just his confidence is, I mean, that it sticks out to everyone, his confidence. And then his, like, like you said, fluidity, fluidity of hands. I mean, he's just so fluent and that left hand. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a, um, I'm not a lefty, but um, hit that left hand. It's just, it's crazy. So just how he puts together combinations is, I mean, you can't, you can't not like the guy. His, like his confidence is crazy. Yeah. And the way he moves, um, particularly in an MMA world is very, um, is very fast and fluid. I mean, when you think about the people he was fighting at his, at his best and he might still come back, he, he took what was good for him and incorporated in MMA. And I think that's a big part about your game too, is you need to do what works for you. Now, when we look at Gaethje, Gaethje comes from a, a more traditional American style wrestling background. And you said that you've been following him. So what have you seen that's good to model from Gaethje? If we were taking those three guys, what would you see from Gaethje? Yeah, I mean, he's a D1 wrestler. I mean, he's he's wrestled with guys like Jordan Burroughs. He's all American. And I mean, he he wants to he wants to stand up there and bang. I mean, he's a tough guy. I mean, he doesn't need the wrestling, but obviously he needed that last night and it didn't work out for him because he couldn't turn down, and he couldn't get out. I mean, just he lost to the better guy last night. There's no way that unless he caught him, which can happen in MMA, but on the ground, it I mean there was no way that he was gonna win. So but how I can model after him, I mean, just his toughness and then just his versatility. I mean, being a wrestler and then being as good as he is at boxing. I mean, he's gets so many compliments about um, being the most violent striker and then how good his hands are, like the fluidity. It's just crazy. Well, it's also great to see. You're absolutely right that it's it's shocking how good Gaethje is and how his entire arsenal is based on his hands when he's still a stud wrestling. I think it shows that in MMA, um, even DC, uh, towards the end of his career and wrestling was obviously his thing. We're, we're beating people with knockouts, you know, so it's always great to see people adding to uh, their resume. When you think now to yourself, um, what do you want your foray into MMA to be as if it's a chapter in your life, what, what do you think you're going to learn or gain from that chapter? I mean, just like a open a new chapter of my life. I mean, just show that I don't just have wrestling. I mean, I want to be a well-rounded fighter and whether it works out or whether it doesn't work out. I mean, just trying new things, trying to get better at something that you're not good at right now. I mean, I'm just ready for it. And I mean, grill house has helped me out a lot. Ray, my dad and all, all the people that are fighting on the card. I mean, they've helped me a lot, so I'm ready. Still training every day. And that's the, and that's what, it will take obviously for your debut. Super excited to see your debut coming up. You've already mentioned Gorilla House, your dad, some of the other coaches, Ethan. Who are who are the people you want to thank specifically in this transition to MMA? If you haven't already mentioned that, yeah, I mean I, I've mentioned them all already. But my dad, Ray, um, Cam, Sid, Ethan, Sheldon, they all work with me. I mean they're all good people, and just getting better. So they they just help, keep helping me get better, and then. I just can't wait to fight. So, and speaking of that fight, I have heard that you're uh, you're selling tickets well. So, what's it going to be like to be able to be there live? Uh, talk about the fact that you want people in the in the stands rooting for you, and what's that going to feel like to kind of for your first time post state? Obviously, you've done some training, but as far as crowd, as far as the spotlight and being in the pressure again, uh, what's it? What does it mean to you to have fans come out and support you? Yeah, I mean, it means everything. I don't know how many tickets I've sold or, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but um, I mean, I've competed even after States in these tournaments. I think I did a um, tournament with 10 matches in August, early August or late August. I'm pretty sure. So I'm ready. I mean, the pressure doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I've been on the biggest stages of wrestling. So, I mean, just another, just another day, whether it happens, I mean, just going out there and having fun, whatever happens, win or lose, but I can't wait. Well, it's been an honor to have you on the show. Um, Kaden, and I can't wait to be there cage side to see you. Everybody that's listening to this, please get tickets at 247fightingchampionships.com and come out to support Kaden, Cassidy, and everybody at Gorilla House. Kaden, thanks for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate it.